This is a 5 inch gauge bottle of the New South Wales Government Railways C32 class and its current state. Its owner has given it to me to do a couple of jobs. First of all, make it steam. At the moment it builds up pressure fine, but as soon as you open the regulator, it loses it. So I'm guessing there's going to be something wrong in the smoke box of the steam circuit. So what I'll do, I'll walk you through the process for testing it and the process of what we have to do to actually get it going again. So, so first step, first thing we notice is that the door doesn't seal properly. So it should be a simple matter of a new spacer under here. How that's survived this long, I don't know. So next step, let's have a look inside. That fitting in the light there, that is one of the main steam pipes down to the cylinders. And you can just make it out, there's some little marks just above it there. That tells me there's a steam leak around that fitting. I've also had a bit of a test in here already before the camera's gone on. And there was the same around that fitting there, only that one was a lot, lot worse. So it's, that's got a little bit of water there from the previous test. All right, a couple of other things we can notice. I've just got to get the camera. The next thing we notice is there's a very large gap around the base of that exhaust pipe outlet there, exhaust pipe. So that'll be helping destroy the vacuum created from the exhaust. So next step, we'll do an air test just to confirm where those leaks are. All right, so we've got the air hooked up, but for safety's sake, we've got the wheel sprag, so the engine can't move anywhere. And all that means is that there's a bit of bar poking through the spokes to jam them up so they can't move. So the next thing we'll do is open the regulator because that's when the problem seems to happen. There's a bit of movement there, so it's not quite in mid-gear. So straight away, as soon as the regulator is open, you can hear the steam coming out of the smoke box. Now, a quick test with my finger tells me that there's not... There's a little bit coming out of the door, but not enough I'd be worried about. Because they always perform differently as the steams are flying. So, it's a bit of soapy water. I'll say so I can... I can see it on camera and I can't call it. And we'll see if we can show you what happens. So you can see the bubbles a little bit there. So you can also see that there's that much air coming out of that one up there. But I can't even get the water to stay on it. So hopefully they're just a bit loose. Alright, so we got a little bit out of that one. But as for the other one... They're always a bit awkward to get to. Can't get the back together on a crow's foot. Alright, so that's a crow's foot. Connects to a 3 8 extension and we just go in here, slide it over to the fitting and turn. So we're getting a fair bit out of it. So it doesn't feel real good. And it's, uh, it might be getting a little bit less. No, I, I think we've got a strip thread in there. But I'll keep going, because if it's stripped it's already buggered, so we're not going to hurt any more than what it is. Oh, I think we just tighten that up. Still a little leak there.
Now that is getting tight. So, regular clamp. So yeah, steam's going back in again. We've still got a leak. But now, it's definitely not as noticeable. So let's see what our water does. Okay, still a little leak there. Nothing on that one. Had a little leak on that one. And look at that, there's leaks all around that one. Probably, yeah. So what I'm actually thinking I might do is obviously something's not happy in there. There's obviously a thread Threads aren't happy or the unions themselves are damaged. So what we might do is just pull the assembly out and see what we can find. This pipe here, only the bottom nuts done up. The top one should be holding out tight and swabbling around all over the place. So there definitely would have been a leak attached to that pipe as well. And as you can see, they're all fairly grubby, so just having to grab a wire brush and give them a quick clean. Let's see what we're looking at. Now, I think we might have another issue here as well which we aren't really counting on because this engine hasn't done a lot of work but to me that looks like soft solder or a low temperature solder and at the very least it's definitely failing you can see the cracks around that rivet head there so I dare say we're going to be replacing superheater elements as well. But first, I want to see what's actually in this end. Now, these do have flats on them. So, I'm hoping I unscrew, which they do. This is the one that was leaking. So you can see around that fitting there's a fair bit of crud under that seal surface because that looks to be an aluminium washer and there's definitely some corrosion on it. So, Alright, so let's have a look at this side where we're going, so we're going to take them out, they're easier to repair. It didn't look too bad, but it looks like it was definitely leaking around that face there. And you can see this, hopefully you can see the shine where it was in contact and then where it was leaking. So that's part of our problem as well. Now we could probably fix that just by getting that washer to come out and replacing it with a copper one. But first, I'm just going to talk to the owner and see what he wants me to do about these. Because that's a failure waiting to happen if it hasn't already let go. So I'll be back. 
So yeah, while I turn the core back, I'll fair myself a different torch so that we can have a look at these fittings down in here. Right, there we go. So that one there doesn't look too bad. There's a bit of rubbish in the end of the union. And the same as this one here. It doesn't look too bad, doesn't look strict. They could definitely use with something just running down of this to clean them up. Because those threads looked a bit short to me. I've already just to put my head in front of the camera over there. Okay. Right, the other thing we need to point out is that on that outlet of the boiler there, the wet header, there is absolutely no gasket. It looks like remnants of some sort of joint compound, but that's it. So there might be, it looks like it might be an o-ring actually in there, but we'll have to dig him out to make sure. Alright, this is the other side of that fitting I just showed you. And you can see looking around here, it's just a copper washer by the look of it. But there's a lot of build up from I'm guessing some kind of gasket, liquid gasket material. So that definitely wasn't sealing. So that's another leak for us. Okay, so what I've what I've decided is I'm going to replace these. I've dealt with this type of superheater in the past and they always fail at this end. And this one's not far off it, so I'll just replace them and be done with it. Do the job properly. So to replace it, we're going to be using these ones. I'm going to turn things on here. So these are the stainless steel elements we make here at the Bureau of Transiering. They will support a couple of other people with them as well. Um, retail, they're 50 bucks for a 516 element. And that's just up to a metre long. So we're just going to put these in. I've used these in my own personal locomotive for placing this style. And there was a noticeable improvement from going to this style of element. The other thing you might notice is that they are significantly longer than the originals. This style, because of the solder join, stops just inside, just before the start of the firebox. Whereas these ones, being stainless, can go all the way to the back without any more effects. Now, to connect them to here, we're going to have to modify this part. I found the easiest way to connect them is to put one of these little elbows on. They're just a little 516 copper elbow off eBay. They'll just go on there. They're a little bit tight. Like so. And they will then feed them a T piece there with the threads on it. Like so, and then these will get a joined with a copper pipe, which will then go down to the cylinder inlets. That way, we've only got two bolts to undo. The un sorry, the two unions. You undo those two unions, you can take the other one out, you can clean it easily, you can service it. If the time comes and needs to be replaced, you can replace it easily. As opposed to this design, we have to pull the whole front end of the engine apart just to get the superheaters out. Okay, so next step is to cut this one apart, clean it up and make up our fittings. Okay, so this is our mud map of our components we have to make to get these superheaters to fit. This is just for the wet header side. So next step, over the lathe. 